This slide shows you some of the goals of our ELL program. Number one goal for us is to make sure that we are teaching cognitive academic language proficiency. Um, many times parents will come to us and say, but my child is speaking English all the time, he's speaking English with his peers, and that's great, and that's a beginning for oral language proficiency, but we really focus on the academic language, and that's the area that comes along last. It takes the longest to develop those academic language skills, so that when students are, for example, reading a word problem in math, they're able to understand the language that's being presented so that they can successfully solve the problem. So that is our number one goal. Um, we're also trying to include as much academic content in the ELL lessons. Um, at Heinz particularly, um, most of our children come to us um, if they have a native language other than English. Um, they are not necessarily literate in their language. So we're working to develop and improve their literacy in English. Um, but of course, we also try very hard to address the students' emotional needs. It can be a very difficult experience to be um, speaking a different language among their peers. So we're working on their emotional needs, trying to make them feel welcome here, and I think we do have an extremely welcoming environment for them. And we want to continue to support the students' native language and um, offer a deep respect for their heritage cultures. We try to encourage parents to continue to read to their children in their native language if they are able to do that, and to continue to speak the native language in the home. The Illinois Resource Center has come up with a number of recommendations for ELL programs, and ours closely correlates to what their recommendations should be. In other words, to make the instruction more comprehensible, well, that's just common sense. You want to make it so that the students understand it. And we've mentioned a couple of times the pre-teaching that goes on and, and the cost of the visuals that you use. How do you make it so the students can understand it easily? Building their background knowledge, their experiential knowledge, and things like that. Um, our teachers should be and are receiving professional development opportunities. Our teachers have gone to several workshops this year, and they uh, contact other professionals in the area to make sure and find out um, what are the current practices they're using, what's current research doing. And I, I think this is a developing field, and so the constant communication amongst the professionals is very important. Um, we should be meeting with our ELL students every day, and we are doing that, and especially that looking at the students and what are the needs of the students. The students that need more time should be getting more time and more help from them. And it also mentions clustering students. If you put your students into clusters of groups rather than spreading them out across your uh, student body, the teachers can work more efficiently with them. Um, going into a classroom or pulling them out in groups, then it's less disruptive to the classroom and more beneficial for the students. Also at the primary level, um, the LL teacher works with making sure that the literacy activities that they are doing are coordinating with what's going on in the classroom. And, um, Again, you're making greater progress by reinforcing those concepts that are being taught in the regular classroom. Um, you want to, as been mentioned before, again, focus on first developing the oral English proficiency. I think some of our most difficult students come if they have several languages. Do they have a base language, and how do you work off of that base language first? And our pushing services are certainly a supplement to pull out program that can work together with each other. This year, our District 67 ELL committee, which was comprised of teachers from both schools, um, worked together um, to achieve the following accomplishments. Uh, we revised our home language survey to make it simpler. When we looked at it, we realized it was a little too wordy, particularly for parents who may not be that proficient in English. So we really simplified it and, and focused on the two questions. Um, is another language spoken at home? And is your child speaking? Make so, just one version. And we have just one version, it's so not two. Um, so it looks much cleaner, and I think it's going to be easier for our parents to manage. Um, one of the things um, that was sparked by the um, NTCCC articulation meeting, which we hosted at Heinz, was um, surveying other teachers and other schools. What are they doing? What kinds of things are they finding successful in terms of best practice and, and strategies in working with the children? And what came out of that was a, a, 
compilation of tips, activities, and strategies the committee put together, which they're going to distribute <coughs> next year on a once a week basis for the general education teachers. Um, the general ed teachers are always asking for more help in working with the children in the classroom. In addition to that, they are putting together a packet of information so that, again, working toward making the children feel welcome, the teachers will already know something about the children because they will be receiving their home language survey. Uh, we're going to ask our new ELL students to do a, a writing sample, and that can be pictures, it can be whatever they're able to do. Um, and that can be presented to the teacher. Um, also, some information about each student's cultural and academic background, which we have a, a wide variety of backgrounds um, and educational experiences among our students. And then we're going to give them what's called the WIDA Can Do Descriptors. And what this is, it's a rubric for the general education teachers to compare the behavior and, and the academic progress that they see in the students with um, progress against the access test. So they'll be able to start measuring how the children are progressing. I think it's a great idea. Some current and future considerations for the committee and the program to continue to research effective resources and strategies for teachers as well as I have at the bottom there the suitable learning materials. Uh, again, what new things are coming out and what programs do we have that will be helpful to students. We need to continue to provide staff development for not only for the ELL teachers, and that's important, but for the regular classroom teachers, say what are the best practices and how, I think sometimes they feel anti by how can I help a student that isn't speaking English, I have one in my room, so we try to get the ELL teacher to provide services to them and strategies and ideas for them that they can use in their regular classroom. Uh, we want to keep the ongoing communication going not only between our ELL teachers and our regular classroom teachers, but with what's going on in the other districts around us and so that we can coordinate services. If an ELL teacher or students need more time, how can we provide that for them? A student that comes in not speaking English would be one of those students that would need more time. How can we work that into our schedule if at all possible? We mentioned clustering that's already uh, exists and continuing in our district. And then once the students have exited the program, and this might be one of the most important points is how do we progress monitor the students to make sure that they are successful? In other words, first they learn how to speak the English, and often there are times when the student can speak English fluently, but they, are they really understanding it? Uh, early emerging readers, we, we check for their rate of reading and how quickly they can read, and some students can read 200 words a minute. Do they really understand what they're reading? And you look at the different data and say, well, see, the student's reading quickly but not understanding. Same thing here, can the students speak English? Yes, but can they really understand? So through the continuing use of data and progress monitoring, we want to make sure that the students that exit the program are successful. That's it.